Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So you're probably wondering, what am I doing with this mound of fabric and lace and all these trimmings? Well, there are a few extras I need to make for the sewing room before I cease and go on to our next phase. So let me show you what I did. Now, dolls, I had a few like bamboo chopsticks, and I think they're a good size dowel to use to make bolts of fabric for the sewing room. So I decided they were the good size and I wanted to go ahead and cut them down. I feel like a few bolts of fabric sitting around in bins and boxes will look good in the sewing room. So I taped them together so I could cut them all at one time. This wood is pretty soft and really doesn't take a lot to cut through it. You definitely would need to hold them steady. So I figured taping them together would make that the easiest. And after I cut them, I decided I would need to sand them down a little bit to make them smooth on the tips. And I'm gonna keep those little cone-shaped nubs. I think they'll come in handy for another part of this project. Now this little piece, I don't even know where it came from, but I think I could use it for the address. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the solid bolts of fabric, I wanted to make some flat bolts and I wanted to make what looks like cardboard tubes. So these little labels, I had an idea for them too, but I'm gonna set them aside for now. Now, when it comes to the cardboard tubes, I just took some brown paper bag and I cut it to the size that I wanted and I added a little glue and I just wound it around the bamboo dowels so that it would be the same size or shape as the bamboo dowels. Now, do this carefully. Now, you don't want to glue it to the dowel. You want to glue it around it and make sure you seal it off. And so you're gonna to need to make sure you put glue to seal off that last seam. And you don't even have to leave it on there to dry after you get it in the proper shape. You just slide it right off the dowel and allow it to dry. Now you definitely wanna make several of these and possibly some in different lengths or make long ones and cut them if you need to. Now, in addition to making the dowels, I wanna show you something else you can make with them. Now, they almost look like paper towel rolls. Now, I did use the same concept when I was making toilet paper rolls. I will leave a link in the description about that. But we're gonna be making ribbon reels. So let me show you. I'm making my circles. I'm drawing them on just a piece of thin cardstock, sturdy enough that it'll be able to take some glue. And now they have all my circles cut out. Let me show you what I mean. So this part of the cardstock actually had a decorative pattern on it, and that's really going to work out. But if you don't have a pattern on your cardstock, you can just use remnant wallpaper to decorate your reels. Now, I did put a hole in these reels. Now, you definitely could do that with a hole punch, or you could cut it out so that it will fit, fit on a dowel or a stick. But that's not what I'm doing, dolls. I'm going to dump mine into a bin. So here I'm adding glue to both sides of the little cardboard roll that I made and allow it to dry. Now, dolls, this is definitely one of those instances where you should make more than you need because once you get started, you're not going to want to stop to go back and create more. So do a few extras. So you see here, dolls, I did several and definitely take your time. Now, this is edited video. It went a lot faster than what it goes in real life. But take your time. Make as many as you need. Make them as thick or as wide as you need, depending on the lace or ribbon that you're going to wrap around them. So now let's get on to those other bolts of fabric. Now, these are going to be my wide, flat bolts of fabric. And this is cardboard, but it's a little bit thinner and it's a little bit sturdier than regular cardboard. It's very firm and it's very thin. So I cut several pieces to the size that I wanted. Now, as a general rule, I would say that your bolts of fabric should be around three inches. Three inches should be a 12 scale yard. <laughs> So let me show you how I made a few packs of buttons for the sewing room. Now you see me here adding my gold nail art studs to the little pieces of card. Now you want to cut several little squares and these are scraps left over from when I made my hat box video. Now remember that little nub or cone piece off of the bamboo skewers? So I decided to glue it to one of the little circle pieces that I had left over for making the ribbon reels. And after sanding the little nub piece, I glued it to the circle. 
Now I'm going to just set this aside and allow it to dry. Make sure you center it so it looks even all the way around. Now let's get back to these buttons. So I had several more cards I needed to do and I did jars of buttons. So I had lots of different seed beads and different colors. No dolls, this is not food. These are seed beads and I'm trying to make them simulate buttons in a jar. I think those jars will look really cute on a shelf in the sewing room. Now dolls, you never can have too many buttons in a sewing room or dress shop, especially if you're making a lot of different types of dresses or outfits. So I'm back at it again, dolls, using more of my nail art. And it was brought to my attention that some of you all may not really know where to look for nail art to use in your miniatures, depending on where you are in the world or where you shop. If you shop with Amazon, you want to look under nail art. And I would mostly recommend the flat back stones, whether it be iridescent, pearl, or silver and gold metallic studs. And I will leave links in the description for some of the things I used in this video. And that'll give you a start with the basics, but don't limit yourself to the items that I've used. The possibilities are endless. Let your imagination go wild. Now I took these and added glue to the little cards. Some of the cards I added six dots of glue, other ones I added eight dots of glue. But I thought these looked really pretty because it made it look as though I had some fancy buttons because these little studs have an iridescent tone to them. They have multiple colors, so I think it gave me a lot of variety because I try to steer clear of the sea of same. Now here I am, dolls, back with the spools that I had from my sewing machine and things video. Now these spools are a little bit oversized, but I still think they'll look really good in the dress shop as if they're large industrial size rolls or spools of thread. So I just wrap yarn, embroidery floss, and thread around all of them in multiple colors so that they will look interesting from a distance. And here are all my spools after they've all been wound with yarn and embroidery floss and I think the variety of colors really looks great. Now I do need to show you how I wrap those teeny weeny rolls so you can see how I came up with those. But let's work on these little tiny spools. Now I don't even know if these were actually supposed to be spools. It may have just been spindles for chairs or staircases but it looked like spool segments to me. So I'm just going to use one part and cut the segments separate after I wind them around with the thread. And the real cool part about wrapping these on this as a stick, it's a lot less tedious wrapping them all while they're on the little pole together. And then I cut the completed segments after I've added all the different colors of thread. Now dolls, I'm going to actually have to look for these. I got these in a crafter's bundle. I really have never seen them sold separately. So if anybody knows what they are or where to get them, definitely leave it in the comments. Now here I am with the little pointed part left over from the chopsticks that I glued to the circle. And all I did was take some yellow embroidery floss and add a little glue and then wound it around the little cone shaped piece until it looked nice and full and gave the impression that it was a large industrial spool of yellow thread. <laughs> now dolls these two pieces are the remnants from what was left over from the window when I made the window wall in the hallway of the roaming house doll house and I thought based on the shape of them they'd make some really cool shelves I also wanted to repurpose this little purple shelf it was left over from the children's room of the original doll house so I decided to stain the two pieces that were from the window wall. Now in this frame, I've already stained them. So I'm just going to glue them together so they'll be sort of like a stacked shelf. So I'll be able to put all kinds of little knickknacks at a variety of heights in the dress shop. So I applied a sparing amount of glue to the bottom portion where I wanted them to connect. Then I stacked them together and allowed them to dry. Now the little purple shelf, I just painted it with a coat of the real brown and allowed it to dry. I am going to do a little distressing to it, but the brown I think will work out well. I don't want it to stand out too much. Now you definitely need extra irons. I've got these two Monopoly game irons that I painted black. Now this little picture frame I'm making for Aunt Bess's work area, it was actually a little shoe buckle and I glued three little black resin flowers to it. Now I do need to put the shoe clip on it to make it stand up. 
but this again was some random nail art that I purchased and I thought the little resin flowers were really pretty and I thought that made a really interesting little picture frame. And I felt like the little black flowers needed something to help bring them out a little bit. So I added some little gold paint to highlight it so you could see the definition in the flowers on the little frame. And I thought that looked cute. Now I did have a couple other frames here and I thought they would be nice for mirrors. This was left over from something I had. It was a bundle, but it looks like it belonged to a kit of some type but I thought it would be really, really pretty as a mirror frame. Now I did add gold paint to both of these. Now this is a broken earring. I thought it was really pretty and I thought it would make a nice mirror frame as well. So after painting them both with the testers gold paint, I allowed them to dry. Now after these two frames were dry, I added some foil looking cardstock which makes really lightweight, easy to make mirrors. And they're really nice because they don't give as much glare when you're taking photos. So here I was making some of those tall cylinder shaped cardboard looking containers. You usually see them in the corners of the sewing room with bolts of fabric sitting in them. This was actually a perfume bottle container. So I wrapped it with brown paper bag and added small amounts of glue and sealed off the seams and allowed it to dry. So since I had two pieces, I went ahead and covered both of them. Now one of the cylinders had the little plastic lid that came with the container. And I thought it would look nice if I just went ahead and painted that silver. Now Dolls Folk Art has a really nice metallic line. But in this instance, I did use my tester's paint because I already had it out and it was open. So I wanted a couple more options with these barrel shaped cylinders. So I used an aluminum foil roll. It's a little bit wider in diameter than the ones that I just made, but it's smaller than the diameter of a toilet paper or a paper towel roll. Now you definitely could use those dolls. I'm not um, uh, ruling it out. I just had a preference for the diameter of the aluminum foil roll. Use what you have. And after I cut the little rolls, I added trimmed them off to make sure it was nice and smooth and level. Now I trimmed off the bottom of the cylinders and the part that I trimmed is the portion that I added the glue to. And then I glued them to some spare card stock circles that were left over from the hat video. So let's go ahead and get some fabric on these bolts. Now remember, I have two different types of bolts. Now I'm going to start with wrapping fabric around the bamboo skewers. Now this is definitely a project you need to put some thought into. You don't want to do this on the spur of the moment. Take time to pre-select the fabric. Use fabrics that you like or wouldn't mind looking at, but fabrics that you don't plan to use because after you glue them around these bolts, you won't be able to use them anymore. Now dolls, I'm working on the flat bolts of fabric and I just began to wrap the paper tightly and neatly around it. Now I'm bunching it up a little bit because it looks like the bolts of fabric I used to see would always be a little bit bunchy. If you want yours perfectly neat and tight, definitely do that. And I want you to take note that I glued some of those embroidery floss labels to the end of these bolts to give it more of a finished look. The other ones I added wallpaper remnants to. And dolls, just like that, you have a lovely bolt of fabric. Make as many as you need, but definitely add a lot of variety in the fabrics, patterns, and colors. Now dolls, let me finish up these little buttons. I did add a little magic marker around the edges. I thought that was a really cute trick that I actually saw on Queen City Minis when she did her book and magazine video. Definitely check out her channel. Using the Sharpie is perfect, and I think it really adds some nice definition around the button card. Now, dolls, this was definitely something I've been looking forward to doing. I wanted to paint these dress forms to make them look like the old vintage kind that had linen at the top of the bodice. I started painting it with a folk art color called tapioca, but I thought it looked a little bit too bright, so I ended up adding a color called latte. Now at the bottom, the skirted cage part, I highlighted it with dabs of my gold testers paint to give it more of a metallic feel. I thought it brought it out a lot and gave a lot of dimension to that portion of the dress form to make it really stand out. Now I definitely had to do a couple layers 
of the tapioca and latte shades and I kind of mixed it so that some parts would look darker, some would look lighter. And I did have to play around with these colors a little bit because I wanted it to look vintage, but it turned out to be perfect. Now that my little ribbon reels are dry, I wanted to add a little decorative design to the ends of them. Now remember some of the card already had a print on it, but the ones that didn't have a print, I added some of my scrap wallpaper to the ends of it just to make it look like it was decorative or maybe some type of logo. Now mines, I didn't put holes in them because I'm not going to string them on a dowel. I'm actually going to put them in a bin or in a barrel. So I just went ahead and made my reels without holes, but I wanted varied decorations as far as on the ends to make it look like they were made by more than one manufacturer. Now you see I just cut out some square pieces of the wallpaper and glued it to the end. And then when it was dry, I just trimmed off the excess. Now I know I already showed you how to wrap the fabric on the bolt, but here I'm just showing you how I added the labels from the embroidery floss to the ends of the bolt. I just cut it to size, little strips left over from the embroidery floss label and glued it to the ends of my cardboard to simulate a label. Now the embroidery floss labels were a little bit shiny and slippery so they didn't work out that well. So I only did one bolt using that. The rest of my bolts I actually just used that same navy blue wallpaper to finish off the ends so it wouldn't just look like raw cardboard. Now it's time to add the ribbon to the reel. Now you need to make sure that your ribbon is the right size for the reel you're using. And you may need to decide that when you're making your little reel. Now you're gonna add glue to the little cardboard part and just add the color ribbon that you want to go on there. And after you've rolled it and gotten it to a length that you like, cut it off and glue it so it won't unravel. Now dolls, here I am using a technique that I found on Queen City Minis as well. She used a pony bead to add embroidery floss to to make a little bundle of yarn. And although I did get quite a bit of the embroidery floss in the bead, somehow, somewhere in the midst of my efforts, something went haywire. And I ended up defaulting to making my yarn like I did when I was a child. I just wrapped it in a little ball. So definitely check out Shira's page to find out how to do it the right way with the pony bead. And although my yarn didn't turn out like Shira's, I think it was still cute. <laughs> now dolls, I'm going to cease operations on creating any more things for the sewing room or dress shop until I actually get the room renovated. Dolls, this project is literally bursting at the seams with accessories. So make sure you stay tuned and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.